looking at the title of this message, it is definitely about relationships. It's about your mate. And I am always very much on the fence about doing these types of words. But whenever I know God tells me to do it, I handle up and I do what I need to do. So the title of this word is, it's a word of knowledge and it is also a prophetic message and it's a big sign that's your person. Tailor made very specific. They will get this about you. So I want to give a few biblical disclaimers before I get started. Because if you heard some of my recent videos, I'm saying I think I want to move just a little bit differently, not a whole bunch, but just doing more biblical disclaimers and more understanding of not just posting one scripture, but doing a scripture above it and the one after it, like sandwiching it up, you know, so that you can get the full context. And sometimes it takes more than that, but you all, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? So there's that, right? I wanted to do that so that I could give this message responsibly because baby, it is wild magnolia in these YouTube streets with all this lying about kingdom marriages and mates and all of this craziness. It is insane. And some of the things that are not being discussed are the things that I think a lot of people who really are on him, like on here with genuine messages about that, they can kind of get lost in the shuffle because it's not all of the frilly, oh, he's coming tomorrow. Oh, he's going to be here. He's going to be there. So what I prayed about when I studied this, I did some online research. Of course, first and foremost, I was quiet. I prayed. I read my Bible and God led me to some things because I kind of wanted to see some other research just to kind of see what this thing was, like why are people so absolutely, utterly obsessed with this right now, right? So I'm realizing too, one of the things God showed me was that there are many genuine people and some of them are my good friends. They know who they are. They speak about kingdom marriages on this platform and we've talked, they know how I feel about it. I know, I know they legitimate. I already told them I felt it in my spirit. And again, I am not the authority here. I'm just saying what I felt in my spirit was legit and what they say has, has been solid. So for those people, that's great. But I want to just give you some biblical disclaimers moving forward before I say anything, because I just want y'all to see how crazy this is. And you cannot just be intercepting and listening to everybody. And sadly, many of you who are well-meaning and you are just trying to get information because you are struggling with matters of the heart. I know you mean well, sweetheart. I know you mean well, King. I know, I know you do. You're searching and you want to answer. I've been through that. That's why I believe God used me to talk about it because I've been wanting to talk about this for probably a year. But now I think it's time for me to talk about it. And this is just the first of many. This is the one particular thing he wanted me to highlight today. But I want to just give y'all some disclaimers, okay? Because here's the thing. It's too many people posting about this subject and they're too busy focused on the algorithm and not the almighty. Okay? Too busy focused on the algorithm and not the almighty. Because at the end of the day, if you were focused on El Shaddai, you would not be so caught up and shooketh when it came to some of these people that you praying and obsessing over and they're not who God has for you. But again, people don't want to hear that. They want to hear the, hoo, hoo, hoo. I straight up, I tell y'all all the time, I love each and every one of y'all, even the ones who hate me. Hey, the hate makes you great. It's all good, baby. Let me tell you, if you don't want to hear it, please, if you go down, I think it's to the right of the page, you can go ahead and hit unsubscribe. And it's all good. Genuinely, I'm not trying to be an idiot when I say that. But I'm trying to get y'all to understand. I'm trying to get y'all to track with me right here. God is so good and vast. You don't have to settle for nothing. Period. When you are genuinely committed to the things of God, you're not worrying about the foolishness people got coming at you or what they're saying. And I don't like how she said this. Okay, well then, nobody got you in a chokehold listening to me. Like you could just move on. Like you genuinely could... You can genuinely just hit unsubscribe. And a lot of people don't even subscribe. They just catch it and they don't even, you know, you can just move on, man. Just, just go ahead and delete it. You know, just move on to the next thing, man. Because I promise you, I promise you this. And I'm speaking from my own experience, right? Even if you don't like what I'm saying or you think it's foolish, I can guarantee you if it's a word from the Lord, you're going to hear it again if God wants you to hear it. I'm not responsible for that part. I'm responsible for this part right here. 
So I just felt like I needed to say that just so we're clear. You know, I'm, I'm very focused and I'm very much, my heart is for all of us to be with the people that God has for us. That's my heart. So that's what I'm focusing on. So let's get into it. Let's get into the word before we get into the, the, uh, let's get into the words of knowledge before we get into the prophetic, the second part of the prophetic word. So hear me out. Okay. So y'all, if you go to Matthew 24, 23 through 27, right? So basically it's saying that at that time there will be false Christ, false prophets. They're going to have fake signs and wonders. Um, and basically saying, even the very elect will be deceived. So I'm going to say something to you. I have been deceived before. And even though I get on here and I prophesy and I say things, right? You never heard me say, it's certain things, I'm going to say it like this. It's certain things you're not going to hear me say because it's just not how I speak. But I'm very careful about that. That's why I was like, you know what? Let me give everybody some context. So that we know what we're dealing with here, right? Now, here's the thing. When you really get into that, it's basically saying anybody could be played. The bishop you see on TV, the, the lady up the street, your favorite mentor, your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife, your child. Anybody can be deceived. And if you know God has a calling on your life, now I'm about to get into it. If you know you are quote unquote elected. And you know God has you operating in excellence through the guise of faith and focus on him. Then you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean by the very elect. So I wanted to explain what the elect was. You are the people that know what you know, what you know, and God have his hands on you. So when you are, when you are elected, that does not mean you are um, excused from deception. Just because you hear me on here with a platform, you hear all of us on here with these platforms, that does not mean we cannot be deceived. And you see when you can say something like that and you're aware that angers the enemy because the enemy wants you to take the type of attitude like someone who I used to speak to all the time. I kind of just stopped talking to them in this way. Um, this is some years ago, though, is because they kind of had the attitude that they don't miss God. Oh, I don't miss God. Now, that's something I like to tell people that God has allowed me to look at. And I'm like, oh, boy, you don't miss. I love being able to say that because in, in the cases with me where I've encountered them, they didn't miss. They didn't miss. So I enjoy being able to say that. And I'm going to give a little more on that, too, in a minute. But for the most part, you have to know that when you're saying these things and you're sharing these things, first of all, anybody can prophesy. I got scripture on that, too, in a second. Right? Anybody can prophesy. But at the same time. We can't get to a place where we feel like we know it all and we know everything and we don't leave room for God to be God. That that Now we get into a sin space right there and we don't want to do that, especially on a topic like kingdom, marriage, spouses and all, all of that stuff. Your person. I'm just going to stick to your person. OK, that's where I'm going with it, with your person. All right. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to go a little deeper with the message version of what. I was saying, and I want y'all to, I want y'all to hear me out because it's very similar to what these YouTube streets looking like with this topic right now. The arrival of the son of man, it says, if anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, here's the Messiah or points, there he is. Don't fall for it. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive credentials and bewitching performances will pull the wool, excuse me, pull the wool over the eyes of even those who ought to know better. Whew. But I've given you fair warning. My God. But I've given you fair warning. Now watch. So if they say run to the country and see him arrive or quick get downtown, see him come. Don't give them the time of day. The arrival of the son of man isn't something you go to see. He comes swift like lightning to you. Whenever you see crowds gathering, think of vultures circling, moving in, hovering over a rotting carcass. You can be quite sure that it's not the living son of man pulling in those crowds. Woo -woo. Listen, listen to me. I know that 
so many people are really believing God right now for their mates. And I had to read that. I know that was a tough one to hear. Again, that was Matthew 24, 23 through 27, the message Bible. It's important, oh man, because you got to hear it. Now, I'm circling back to something I said. Stop putting people on pedestals in this space. Because when they're talking about your marriage and your love life and you're looking for things, y'all, you got to understand if you are not in your word, if you are not, if you are not paying attention or studying on some level, which is something I have gone through so many times in my life where I always had to get my mind right. But the good thing about the word of God, once you study and it's stick and it's in your heart, it's written on your heart, you're not going to forget it. You can always pull that mug back out. However you were trained, whatever, how, um, I forgot the scripture about train up a child. It was written on my heart as a girl. So coming on up as a woman, you know, you pull from that. And then when you get your own walk with the Lord, you start learning for yourself, right? So here's the thing I want you to think about. Everyone can prophesy. Now go to 1 Corinthians 14, 29 through 32. And it says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. For you can all prophesy one by one. That all may learn and all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Okay. You have the capability and the ability to speak life and to prophesy. Okay. You have the ability to do that. And somebody might say, girl, get to the word. No, I'm not. If, if you thinking that right now, you can get off right now. I'm telling you, I can feel it in my spirit. Go on, get off. Because this is not for you. This is for a person who really wants to be with their mate. And you really want to be with your person. You want to be in your God-ordained covenant marriage. That is who this is for. And if that's what you really want, you are going to hear this out and hear this word. Because you want to know why? You are more concerned about serving the father. You are more concerned about running your household a certain way. You are more concerned about connecting with the correct partner. And not the partner that you think is correct. Right? Right? And you are more concerned about legacy and building and what you guys have to do together and how if you have the wrong people in your life and around you, and if you're focused on the wrong man or the wrong woman, you're going to be caught up in their foolishness and shenanigans and all the foolishness and shenanigans around them. So no, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be easy on this one because I'm serious. It, it breaks my heart to see how many people are caught up. And there's so many people who do have the gifting that don't want to humble themselves and say, I was wrong. I didn't say that right. But you go to sleep at night and you know some of that stuff ain't right because you was going from your flesh. And that's another thing where the enemy getting people in a chokehold. Because you get one person who say, oh, they connected to it. But that's a person who don't even have a relationship with God. That's a person that, that there's nothing for you to base that on. Y'all, a lot of people can cheer. What that what that scripture said? All them people run into that. You you could rest assured that's probably a dead carcass. God ain't attract. Uh, God ain't attracting no no uh no crowd like that. The Son of Man ain't attracting no crowd like that. So that's why I'm saying you got to be careful hanging on and believing all this stuff. You're going to know who's the real thing and who's not because they out here and they out here to tear you up. They don't want you to get a line because let me tell you something. Some of y'all got children that have to come in a certain span of time. That's why you shouldn't be worrying about how old you are. That's why you shouldn't be worrying about if he look like this and he do that. This is what I know about God. Go read the song of songs y'all. Come on. Like it's, it's a full on love story. You dig? It's a full on, you know, he's attracted to her. She's attracted to him. He talking about the shape of her body and what he like and what she like. And man, look, God got it all covered for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason why we need to be tripping about that. But the thing that's, that's, that's getting people jacked up is that they're not understanding the word of God. So when people coming at you with this stuff, you can recognize it. They got this one girl, I promise y'all. I'm not going to say her name. But they got this one girl who probably started posting maybe about six months ago. I can't, I, that could be wrong. The time is, well, we're in February 2022. I don't remember. She started posting in 2021, okay? This girl was stealing everybody's post. It was insane. And I was like, I can't even report this girl. I just started praying. I was like, Lord, this girl is not, and y'all, I could literally just see it. I'm like, this girl is not being led by the Holy Spirit. And what, what's even scarier is if, you, if you're taking people's stuff and you, you're doing all of these things, right? 
and you pulling from somebody's page who's also not hearing from the Lord. Now you didn't remix that because now you're trying to get your numbers up. It's crazy. That's why I had to learn. I'm not worried about none of that. The people who's supposed to hear me are going to hear me. And when God wants to move a certain way, he will. My job is to make sure I I share the message. My job is to make sure I do that. Okay. So with that being said, right, we got a couple of things covered. We understand that, you know, hey, even the very elect could be deceived. So some of y'all just readjust who you're listening to and what you're watching, including myself. I might not be somebody somebody God wants you to hear in this season. I'm not telling you anything false. And again, you can always try me by the Lord. Again, I am imperfect and even the very elect can be deceived, but I can assure you when I do come on here, I always ask God to help me and to hold me accountable as best as possible. Not always, I don't get it right all the time, but I'm, I'm surely attempting to do that the correct way. I might be a little brash for some people. It might be a little too much and that's okay. I completely understand that as well, but this is the personality that God gave me. And I would encourage you to embrace your own as well. You're not going to be for everybody. And the truth is y'all, you shouldn't want to be. That's that on that. Now let's get it y'all. Let's get it. Cause it's going to help all of us. So a couple of things that I want you guys to know. So the title of this was a big sign. That's your person. So let me let me now get more specific as to who exactly this part of the word is for. And I mentioned this in my video yesterday as a disclaimer for this one. This is not for somebody who is running around in the world and they're just picking anybody they see. They're sleeping with a bunch of people, talking to... This is not for that person. This is for a person who is in a space in their life and they know that God is calling them to a marriage and not just for them to pick somebody or companionship, but this is for a man or a woman where you know in your heart, not your heart's desire, but you know in your heart, the Lord is leading you to this in this season. Y'all, that's two different things. So please, 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 please catch that. Not what you want. But God is leading you first and foremost to head in this direction for marriage and to prepare. Now, that can be second where it is the desire of your heart. But if it is the first thing, this is not for you. This is for somebody who's literally feeling a pull in this time in their lives concerning a marriage. Okay? Now, check this out. So, the thing that God kept telling me, he was like, this is something that you have to speak on. And I especially have to speak to the women on this, but this definitely, absolutely a million percent applies to the men too. Here's what's going on. There's some, some of you beautiful women out here, beautiful young ladies, and maybe not you, but maybe somebody, you know, you are really caught up in believing a particular person is your, your mate. Again, I've been there before. Trust me, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt twice. So please believe me. I have made the mistake. It's a little embarrassing, but not really because it's not what it is anymore. But I, I'm glad I've been through it so I can tell you and maybe you won't feel so bad and it might actually help you detach from the person that God does not want you to be with. So maybe hopefully that can encourage you because I wanted to be transparent about that because a lot of people don't tell the truth about that because they shame. They don't want nobody to know, but I don't care that I'm going to end up with my person. So it don't matter to me. <laughs> I believe that. I know that. So again, y'all know me. I'm tangent shorty. I'll be going off on tangents like a mug, but stay with me here. <laughs> now, the thing is, y'all, for the beautiful young women and the, the awesome young men out here who are believing God for a person, a very specific, particular person, I want you to just think about something, Okay. Does this person have the capability to understand your spiritual gifts and understand your walk? Okay, now, this way the territory going to get a little, you know, because there's, a, like I said, there's a lot of words flying around. So this is where you're going to have to tap in. And you're going to have to genuinely go to the Father for yourself because I'm going to tell you all a few things. Number one, just because a person, just because you meet a person at a particular time, they may not understand who you are what your spiritual gifts and, and who you are with God. They may not understand that you pray and fast and you may have all these cool gifts and, and you, you, you lovingly and, and appreciatively um, embrace them and you, you use these gifts for the work of the Lord, right? They're going to be people who, you know, you are putting your eye on or someone is telling you is your person. 
and this is not your person because the person that God has for you for your covenant marriage, they will fully accept that. Now, somebody might say, well, no, I, I, listen, may not be for who I'm talking about specifically. Like I say, a word of knowledge, I made sure I'm giving you biblical words of knowledge and it is a prophetic word. This is prophetically for a person for, uh, Esther 414, such a time as this, this is specifically for you. If you are a person who is literally trying to do all you can to live the life that God has called you to live and you are focused on somebody who is so out there bad in the street right now, some might call him a prodigal, somebody, you know, somebody might say, you know, he out there, whatever, whatever. For you in particular, the person that I'm talking to, and this is how you're going to know I'm talking to you. You're going to feel that thing in your spirit. And a couple of times, a couple of things happened recently and you kind of felt God was pulling you away, but you did not do it. So this is for you. This is how specific this word is. So some of y'all going to hear this and be like, oh, this ain't for me. So good. Cause I, I, I don't want you to take something that's not yours. You know, I want to be helpful and serve you with the right stuff. So just know this part right here is specifically for you. You have got to be with the person who's going to understand your spiritual gifts. I didn't say they had to have matching spiritual gifts. I did not say that every time you prophesy, or every time you interpret a dream or you do whatever, they are supposed to be, Oh my God, you're awesome. No, 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 no. But there has to be that understanding where that person is like bet, because this is what that person understands. This is why this is so specific. If you have your eyes on the wrong person who still has to develop in those areas in this season, you are not paying attention to who God is truly showing you. Some of you think it's a person you know and you're fixated on him or her, but how about you don't you haven't even met him yet? And I'll tell you another confirmation. The Holy Spirit is saying some of you have gotten conflicting words on your husband. Like somebody said this and somebody said that, but you trust both of them. You want to know why that happened? You want to know why that happened? And you like flip flopping and these are normally two people you can trust because God wants you to trust him. He don't want you to pay attention to what they're saying because now you're operating in confusion. You're still holding on to these words. You're still trying to hang on. You're still trying to hear it, but it's still, you're still missing it. But that's why you're missing it because God said, you know what? I believe it's in the Old Testament, y'all. I'm going to have to go and pull that up in another study because I did it a couple of years ago. But I think it was something like God allowed a false prophecy to happen in the Old Testament. Please don't quote me on that. I got to go and double check it. But it was something like, it was almost like a setup of some kind. And if you know what I'm talking about, hit it in the comments, but I know I'm not making this up y'all because you know, God does everything in order, but it was a, I don't know if he was trying to teach a lesson or he was trying to set the stage for something, but it was something about, I don't know if he just did. He was trying to see if the person believed the, that, that human being, or if that person was trusting God, but the Lord presented something in front of them. And I think that they had to make a decision and decide who they were going to believe. So I'm going to put a disclaimer right there. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to circle back and y'all hit the comments so that I could do a point of reference for that. But anyway, the point was God is trying to get you to understand that your person has to understand your gift. You want to know why? Because you already operate in your gift on a high level. It might not be on the public platform and it might not be where a bunch of people know you. But when I say high level, there's a potency to your words. There's, there's a, a specificity there as an undercurrent in your words. And so the Lord uses you in a powerful way. Sweetie, that's not going to dwindle. It is not going to disappear and go away. You're going to do it even more. It's going to expand. So that's why for you, God is going to link you with a partner. He might not be deep into the Bible and super duper wonderful, heavenly and wonderful in the spirit realm. No, but he's not this person you're focusing on who is just so out there. They, they don't even respect your gifts. See, that's the thing. That's why I said this one thing. This is what I was talking about. When it comes to your spiritual gift, I'm about to tell you what this is going to unlock in your covenant connection, your covenant marriage. That person understanding your gift, again, not necessarily operating in it and not necessarily um, flowing neck and neck with you all the time. But this person is going to understand my spouse, my, 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 my partner, my person, my Genesis 2.18. The love of my life, the person that I believe God handcrafted for me, I'm handcrafted for them. I know that them having this gift is going to unlock so much for us as a unit. 
so that we can do the things in this earth that God wants us to do. That is what they're going to think about your gift. They don't always have to fully get it and understand it. Yo, honestly, it might scare them, but it's too many people right now who have really good sense. That's why I said that scripture, even the very elect will be deceived. You got good sense. You got good, good sense and you're not using it because the enemy got you all muddied up and confused because it's like, no, but it's him. It's him. It's him. It's her. It's her. No, if you genuinely know it's now, you want to know why it never works out. You want to know why it keeps being hit and miss. You want to know why, but I prayed that he was in a dream and three other people had the dream and then he had this and she had that. And we had the same middle name and the last name, all of this stuff. You want to know why that is not the Lord? Cause it's not lining up and I'm not telling you nothing. You don't know. And you know it. You and I both know it. I don't know you. You might know me and you can hear me on here, but you know doggone good and well. The Lord do not want you with that person and you are afraid to let it go. There is something in one of you listening to me right now that feels like, oh, he going to be ugly. He going to be this. She going to be that. She ain't going to be fine like I want. She got a stomach. She fat. He's skinny. He blah, blah, blah. Yo, none of that stuff matter because this what you sleeping on. How could you think so low of God that he's going to give you somebody you miserable with? Somebody you going to throw up if you look at them too long? Like, let's just really get some perspective here. Where is that fear coming from? Why? Why do you have to have that guy? Why do you have to have that girl? Some of that stuff, y'all, is so demonic and so tie, tie, uh, so tie-ish, excuse me, and you cannot even recognize it because you've been riding this wave with this person for so long. And I can tell you what, if some of y'all going to hear this and you're going to get it. And when I tell you, you're going to be emailing me and texting me or, or, or uh, not texting me, I'm sorry, uh, hitting the comments. Well, some of y'all might text me if you know, I don't know who listening, so maybe, I don't know, but, and you're welcome to do that if you have my number. But what I'm saying is you're immediately going to walk into the relationship. It's almost like God is like, hey, listen, I'm sending somebody here. Like he's just wa waving the flag like, hey, no, listen, daughter. Listen, son, no, hear me out. No, 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 not him. Stop it. Please don't waste another day. You keep praying on this fella. You keep praying on this girl. No, no, no. I got this fella. I got this girl. You know, turn this way. Go this way. It's going to happen so quickly. That all you're going to do is be like, oh my God, like I can't believe I waited this long for this. So let, let me tell you something. I did a little research online and I found this excerpt and I thought that this was really, really good. I want to share it with you just to give you some more context on this topic. Okay. Here it was what it reads. Recognition of spiritual gifts is not pride. Some Christians assume that recognizing that they have a spiritual gift is the same as being proud. This is not accurate. Remember that spiritual gifts are bestowed by God. It does not refer to giftedness in the sense of some people are quote unquote special while others are not. The spiritual gifts are God's, not yours. Spiritual gifts are not about us. You are a steward who has been fashioned by God to serve him. And the scripture references Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So let me tell you why I gave y'all that, that context. Your person is not, your per, the person you're focusing on or the, the, and it might not be a specific person. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Cause I, he had to correct me just now. Cause now I'm seeing, you may not think it's, it's this person, but you have an idea of a person. Like he might be this height, this weight, have this much money. So even if it's that, this still applies to you. If you know, you're supposed to be getting uh, connected in this season, right? Listen. The person that you are believing is your person. They're recognizing your spiritual gift as pride. Some of them are jealous. Some of them don't understand it. And then it makes you feel bad. Let me tell you why this, your person has to get this about you. This is so, so important. This was a gift bestowed to you by God. So that means you didn't ask for it and God wanted you to have it. So you got to operate in it, baby. You got to operate in that bad boy. And you got to be with somebody who's going to have the understanding. Yo, I don't be getting what she go through sometime or what he doing sometime. But I know it's pure and I know it's from the Lord. I know that if, if, if I don't, if I really accept and understand the magnitude, y'all got to, y'all got to catch this right here. What is a gift? 
Gifts are meant to be given, right? So imagine you are in this relationship and you have the gift of the prophetic. Let's just say that. Let's say you, you did everything God told you to do. Maybe made a couple mistakes and hiccups, but bam, you get to the finish line. You're in your kingdom marriage. You're doing your thing, right? Do you understand the level of power in that covenant when you can see prophetically for that person? You can, and again, y'all, your life is not supposed to be operating on a prophetic every second of the day because you still got to live life. It's not, it's not meant to be an obsession, but do you know how beautiful it is to, to be with the plug? And here's the thing, even your spouse that, 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 that's honoring your gifts, they could be the plug too. Cause I just read the scripture and say, anybody could do it. It's not like, just like this little, this excerpt I read, it doesn't mean giftedness. It just because that person, if you are operating in your gift, it doesn't diminish that other person. They just may not be into it. Cause I just feel to believe everybody got something that's in that word for we are his workmanship. So that means everybody got a little work with them. He, he gave everybody some work. You heard me? You just have to figure out what yours is. But when you are constantly connecting yourself to people who get you away from your spiritual gifts, if you are constantly connected to people, are you attracted to this man who, when you prophesy, he don't even listen to you? You know, if, if you, if you over here and you like, okay, I have the gift of discernment or the gift of whatever, the gift of wisdom, whatever your gifts are as many spiritual gifts. And when you do it, they just shoo it away. They don't even listen to you. That's another thing too, y'all. These gifts are heavy. And I try to tell people all the time, like, listen, when this come to pass, let me know. It just goes back to what this woman said. Or I don't know if it's a man or a woman who wrote this, but this, this thing that I just read said, we're not trying to get no accolades for that, but it's scary sometimes to have to be in a place and give people prophetic words, y'all. That's not, that's not a picnic for somebody who take that seriously. Cause I know for me, I'm not trying to tell anybody anything. I don't get down like that. So when you know, when you keep seeing this coming to pass and, and what they saying coming to pass and it's happening or you appreciate what you did, it's people so selfish. They're not even going to tell you. They're not, that's why you got to be so careful. And, that, and that's why I think it's so important. You got to keep praying because guess what? Things are done in season, y'all. There's a thing called seed time and harvest. Some of y'all in seed time. Sometimes some of y'all are in harvest. Some of y'all in, like I said, as the 414, such a time as this. And you are operating in the space where you are preparing to be in this, this divine relationship that God has for you. But it is so important. Again, whoever your person is and whatever your situation is, right? It is more important that you become the person that you need to be than knowing who the person is. That part don't matter. And I can tell you something, baby. I got a PhD on that. Because let me tell you something. It looks a certain way. It, it comes together a certain way. Because you want to know what happens when, when this word that I'm telling you comes to pass. You want to know what happens? What happens is you start to really understand what it means when we talk about love and then you're going to start to see what it looks like. Cause let me tell y'all love is patient. It's kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor you. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. Honey, that's all the red flags. If all of that's popping up, fall back. Now tell you something else about love. It don't like evil. It don't like lies. It likes truth. And it's also protecting you. I was just telling some people, I've been talking about this for months now. I know for women in particular, y'all, we like to feel safe, man. If you just throw us out there, and, and when I mean throw us out, I mean like any type of situation, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and we just don't have nowhere to go or turn or we got to figure it out. That is crushing to a woman, but that is biblical because love is supposed to protect it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. It always preserves. Love will always persevere, y'all, through anything because God is love. Y'all, it never fails. Hear me out. Love never fails. Listen, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Because when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. 
Oh, but when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, in a mirror that, we, that we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Y'all, even that's letting you know, love is for a grown man. Grown men out here loving. Grown women out here loving. Okay? That's grown. That is right there in the word. And I never thought about that part. And something I posted on, I posted in 2017. I was following this, um, uh, not following, I'm sorry. I was, I happened upon this, this pastor, I think in Oklahoma, I forgot his name. He wasn't in Tulsa, but it was a very small church. Um, and this man, he said he and his wife had been married for a long time. I, I love their ministry because they just send you all their stuff for free. He just prayed for a ministry where God would always fund money. Whenever people wanted anything from their ministry, they could send it for free. And they've been doing that, I think, for, what, 30, 40 years now, all right? And he posted this thing. He was like, me and my wife have been doing this since we were married. And I can give y'all that, too. If you want me to link this, I can link this, too, where you can make, I can make this a downloadable, too, if you want it. I'll put that. Um, I'm actually going to, in fact, let's put a pause right there. I'm going to circle back to that in a second. Anyway, it's, it's a love, it's a love, the love scripture and he puts lines on it. So where it says love is patient, love is kind. You put your name in there. Robin is patient. Robin is kind. Robin does not envy. Robin does not boast. Robin is not proud. So you put your name in the blank wherever you see love and it is going to, it is going to change your life. You can say that every day about your loved one. You can say that about yourself, but make sure you always put yourself in it first because you want to cover your bases first. Y'all, this is why it's so important that you hear from the Lord and you do what the Lord is telling you to do specifically. You want to know why? Because nobody's perfect. Even with me delivering this message, there's nothing, it's not even about it being perfect, but it's about you understanding the depth of what God has given you and how when you operate in excellence in your gift, the gates of heaven will not only open for you, but it will also open for your person because you guys are all connected. You're all connected. So when I say that again, I don't want you to, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I'm not saying this person has to be perfect. They don't have a past. They don't have a history. That's not what I'm saying. But for some of you, God is sending you a ready man. He's a person that understands like, yo, we got to get this going, man. Like this is what it is. It, it has to be for the woman. Like, you know, some of you fellas, you're waiting on this woman and, and it's almost like you want this, you want this woman on the internet with a BBL or something like there is some of you who you don't mean no harm, but you have let social media, your boys and all of these things you watch is, is, is terrible. You know, it, 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 some of you, even good godly Christian men is making you deviate. You know, you might be on this, on this platform, lusting after women because they, they spiritual women of God and you all of them pretty and fine. And you praying, you know, look, don't pray on people like that. I say that to everybody, y'all. Like we got to, I, I, I am absolutely about that life. I don't pray for nobody to be this part. No, I want him to be this. I want her to be that. Oh, no, 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 no. That's witchcrafty. I'm not with that. You don't have to do that. You just have to pray according to God's will for people. And the rest works itself out. You get more specific as God gives you more specifics. But here's the last point I want to bring up to you. For those of you who are asking like, okay, Robin, I hear what you're saying. But, you know, just because my person is different from me, that don't mean that they're not going to respect my gift. Maybe they got to grow into it. But like I said, this is not for that person. This is for the person who is really thinking in another way. And you are you are trying to accept someone and bring someone into the fold that God does not want in that capacity. Because when you and your husband get together, it's high level. We talking both of y'all spiritual gifts going to be set off because he just might be like, man, I respect what she said, man. I respect, you know, you might say, man, I respect what my baby say. I, I hear him. I know the Lord is speaking through him. You might be on that already. But what you got to get is when you connect though, when you connect, that person is going to get that because I'm telling y'all, I, man, I know y'all going to be hitting me up when this come to pass. I'm telling you, it's going to be popping. The minute both of y'all are obedient and you connect the way God says, here comes the wealth. Here comes the family. Here comes all of these things. Here comes all of these things. Listen, God is going to put you in a position as a couple 
he is going to heavily rely on your spiritual gifts, but he is only going to rely on those spiritual gifts when he knows that you can trust you can he can trust you and you are not making the ability to prophesy idolatry. You don't make every single you every single thing you do about that. You know what I'm saying? When God knows that you can balance that thing out, he going you going to rock and roll with it. Because like I said, if anybody can do it, you know, wouldn't you rather something that anybody can do? Wouldn't you rather you get a, a the, the green, the green light from the father? So, you know, you're doing it in excellence. And it's almost like, huh, it's almost like the spiritual blue check, baby. The same way you get verified, that's your verification. So if they don't have that spiritual check, I'm going to just say, look, the, imagine a green check. Imagine a green check, like the check on all of the social media to, to prove verification. If they don't have that, Keep it moving. Because here's the thing, my guy, my sister, you are not a desperate man and you are not a desperate woman. You're not trash. You cold blooded. You dig? Y'all heard that N.O. come out of me? <laughs> but you fire like that. You, hey, listen, man, you don't have to settle for that foolishness. Who, who told you? Because that last fool didn't like you. didn't think you was cute and fine and pretty enough. Because that last broad told you, oh, well, I want somebody who got money and I want somebody who sticks by and Okay, well, you know what? Well, forget them. If you are more concerned about literally operating in excellence in this marriage and the situation that God has for you fully, then you're not going to worry about that no more. Don't let them people try to tell you that. Don't stop reading them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Stop reading them old text messages. Delete them pictures. Delete them emails. Delete them text exchanges. And stop talking about him and her with your friends. Unless you know you're speaking on the things of God, that season in your life is over. He don't want that for you. So to answer your question, they are supposed to be different from you. Now I'm about to read some more scripture to you. And that's how we're going to leave out. And I'm going to say maybe one thing after. Because I got something for y'all. I didn't do all this for nothing. I definitely got something for y'all as a result of this uh, recording. So listen to this. If you go to 1 Corinthians 12, 18 through 24, it's a bit, it's a bit lit. Excuse me. It's a bit lengthy. Hang, hang out with me for a second. It's going it's to make sense. It's going to slap. All right. Check this out. It says, I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If the foot said, I'm not elegant like the hand and embellish it and embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to the body. Would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like I, transparent and expressive. I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from your body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. No matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. Honey, let's hear that again. Run that back. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but it would be a monster. What we have is one body with many parts. Each is proper size and its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine I telling hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out? As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body, you are concerned with it. It makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comparisons. If anything you have more concern for, excuse me, if anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good, di good digestion to full bodied hair? Now that was loaded. First Corinthians 12, 18 through 24 message Bible. So that's how we wrapping up. So hear me out. This is why I wanted to end with this. 
This is not about saying you're better than someone because you have a spiritual gift. This is not about saying, oh, that's not your person because he don't, he don't understand that you tell prophecies. No, this is to let you know you are a part of something. Your mate is a part of something. And on a basic level, it doesn't, listen, they could have been married before. They could have been single their whole life, never talked to a soul. They could be out there bad. They could have been doing all kinds of stuff that don't look like nothing we talked about. But if that person is ready today and they understand the magnitude of what connecting with you is going to be like, then God wants you to get in line too. Because now you have to understand the magnitude of it. And now you have to be willing to say, I'm beyond just looking up and Googling prophecies and whatever people tell me on TV and, and looking up every book and conference about a spouse. I understand this is kingdom business. I understand that I was bought at a price and I'm supposed to be here for the greater good. I understand that there's a huge possibility I may have to carry seed into this earth and the right man has to sire that seed. That cannot be anybody. Y'all come on now. Let's stop playing these games. Because at the end of the day, I'm getting chills, y'all. When God does it, woo! I don't care what he looked like. You don't care. I don't know. None of us care. My boy out here listening, whoever you are who worried about this one girl, when I tell you the one for you is bad, she bad for you. It's not through the lens of what everybody else thinks it is and what you've been lying to yourself believing. But that's another thing, y'all. A lot of people can't get that person because they're too shallow. They're too shallow. And this is the awesome, awesome thing I have to say. Many people do not get the best that God has because God is purposely hiding things within that person that the person dissing them don't see. God is not even going to activate that. Oh, I got more chills. God is not even going to let them know that that person has that capability or they know this thing or they, they have this education or they have this gift and all, whatever it is. He is hiding so much because he will not let a shallow person see that because he knows that shallow person would only go to them for that. That's why he's like, no, go ahead. Keep picking people for the wrong reason. But you see this one, I, you see this man right here. I got for you, girl, this one here. Whoo. This thing here, he off the chain. He's fire. This one of my best. You don't even know. Like some of y'all dissing a dude because man, he don't, he ain't in the beard game. I ain't never seen him at shoe. Six, from, six months from now, that boy might be full blown beard gang. You're going to be mad because somebody else going to be the swept him up bare face. And you over there like, man, I should have got him. Nope. God know what he doing. I'm being silly right now, but I'm serious y'all. Y'all have to understand how powerful this is because God is going to give you the desires of your heart. And like I said, I just don't believe God going to give you somebody you got to settle for. And you're like, Ugh. but I tell you what, you're going to have the hots for them and he going to have the hots for you and vice versa. That could, hey, song of songs. I told y'all, y'all want to see it get, y'all want to see hot steamy relations like this. <laughs> we had a song in the world. It's like, oh, hot steamy relations. Okay, so that's not, fully appropriate but it's so silly i'm sorry but yeah you want high steamy relations within the confines of marriage absolutely so i guess it is appropriate under those confines but yes that is what you have awaiting you y'all know i'm silly i gotta be myself i hope i hope y'all not too stuffy and like oh my god what did she say but nah for real y'all i i want you to be encouraged and i want you to understand that this wasn't necessarily super easy for me to talk about but it was necessary for me to talk about because who you are is incredible and your person is incredible too. And you want to, you have to understand that if it's, if it's a now season for that, some of you have your focus on a person who is just not willing to do that. And honestly, oh boy, I was about to wrap up, but I'm getting something else. So I just want to speak to the people who feel like they're not worthy because there's a, there's another group of people I'm starting to see. There's a group of people who you get it. Like you want that person or you love that person or you would, you know, you, you attracted to them. You don't have no issues, but you don't think you're worthy of that person. Can you relate to that? If you can relate to that, hit, hit the comments. Listen, your, your worth and who God has called you to be and all of these things, you cannot keep viewing yourself through the, through the lens of inadequacy. It doesn't matter how you grew up. It doesn't matter how, how the other person grew up. You need to know them by the spirit. You need to say, Lord, you know what? Have I exhibited love to this person? Have they exhibited love to me? 
Have we been able to get through things or have we gotten to a place where, okay, well, maybe I don't personally know this person yet, but I'm wide open to see what God is going to do so that we can walk into this with love. It's so it's hundreds of ways, it's thousands of ways, even millions, maybe of, of looking at it. Right. But I think it's more important that you settle with this. You will only settle if you don't see yourself the way God does. You will only settle if you don't take the leap and do the things that God tells you to do concerning this matter. But it's important that you know as we ride out on this thing, when it comes to the covenant and the, the, the people who this word is for, where you know God has an incredible situation for you, not something perfect, not something out of a fairy tale, but something divine, something miraculous, something spectacular, something that like my favorite song and one of my wedding songs, people will stop and stare and smile at us. Listen, hear me out. You're going to have that, but you got to let God do it. And you have to be willing to let go so that you can grab onto the thing that God has for you and that person too. I appreciate y'all. And I want to tell y'all something on Monday, I am dropping my latest book. And the Lord said that this needed to go with this recording because a lot of us have struggled with forgiveness and unforgiveness. And I thank God I have such a great testimony, multiple testimonies about forgiveness, being forgiven and also extending forgiveness. So I have a book dropping on Monday called How Do I Forgive When I Feel Like I Hate Them? I want you to sign up for it. I want you to get it. It's, it's going to drop on Monday. And I, of course, if you got my last ebook, that's available for you too. Um, God told me to move, you know, Check that book out as well. I did a video with it, but this time when I drop this video, I mean, when I drop this book, I'll go ahead and drop the book and the video at the same time. And then you guys will be able to, you know, kind of get the full scope of what's going on with it. But hopefully if you, you do have any hangups with holding on to the old, to the old person or not accepting the new person, sometimes there's some, some forgiveness issues that are underlying that we haven't really addressed. And so God has that thing on pause and you know, you're not going to be able to get with somebody who fully understands your spiritual gifts because you could be harboring some resentment or unforgiveness in an old situation that you have yet to recognize. So I'm going to be obedient and drop that for you guys on Monday. I hope that you got something from this. Please like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and please check me out at I'm wired to inspire.com. And you can see at the end of this message, I have a whole um, I have a whole uh, playlist of prophetic words and then I have my last word next to it. And it is about it's rain and bread. That's a prophetic dream. But I have tons of stuff on there. We just finished the pep talk prayers uh, series. In fact, that's going to be finishing up today in a couple of hours. So, um, yeah. So I appreciate you guys and thank you for listening. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are, too.